I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. I love using Inkscape to make complicated things easy. And today we'll do how to make a cutout effect where the subject is piercing through a number or a letter. I've seen these in recent advertisements and I thought that could be a good tutorial because it covers three things, simple masking, clipping, and then the filter effect of drop shadow. So let's begin. We'll start by setting our page to all the same dimensions. This right here, if you go to file, document properties this is the a4 format and you can go with anything you want but if you're on this scale when you see the settings i use it'll be the same it'll work a little bit easier so we'll start with i'm going to go with number two this let's see what font this is this is enter v heavy it should be 285 and i want to lock it in so i'll go to path object to path if i double click it now i can see the nodes it's its own path and let's bring in the source image i got from pexels.com you can download it there or download something that you want to use and you bring it into Inkscape by dragging it from your desktop or the folder just drag it to the canvas you'll get a pop-up box I used to always do embed in the comments in the last video someone said if you do link it reduces the file size makes things go smoother so we'll try that the rest of it stays the same image DPI from file image rendering mode none okay <laughs> there she is having a good day here if you hold control you can reduce it evenly make it about the size of the page and now you can put your two hierarchy if it's on selection tool bring it to the top right there let's change it to white on the ribbon here and this O that stands for opacity let's make it 50% I actually flipped her horizontally I'll select the image up here this is directional we'll change it other direction and I want to put it so a little bit of her face is showing her arm goes up here but I also need the iPad to pop through once you have it the way you like it you're going to want to grab everything and do Control d to duplicate it you actually only need it twice but i set things up over here doing it three times just to make it super simple super clear step one will be the mask you take the number two first it has to go back to full opacity so we'll do 100 percent and the way a mask works is whatever is white is what is going to be taken from the bottom image or whatever is underneath it with the two selected i'll hold shift and grab the image object mask set mask that's the first part let's skip ahead to shadow for this one you don't actually need the bottom image but i think i will make it full opacity 100 go to filters shadows and glows drop shadow here are the choices i played around with for blur radius you want to be on two horizontal offset negative two vertical offset two and shadow type go to inner cutout nothing's going to happen until you click live preview that's what i want right there hit apply close out of it we can bring this and lay it on top and see the effects start to take hold now we need to grab her arm and part of the ipad so it pops through the way you do that First, if you've ever watched the tutorial I have on how to remove background or some of the trace bitmap tutorials, you can do in depth, you can watch in depth how to do this. I'm going to fast forward ahead. Basically, you want to take the Bezier pen tool and if you go over the mode, do B spline. What we're going to do is we'll draw one shape around the arm, a shape around her cheek and the part of the iPad that we want. Time jump, you can see I made a shape around the arm part of her face and the top of the iPad. The extra step I wanted to show you though is to collect them all, iPad, arm, I'm holding shift to get all of them, and the cheek, go to path, union. That makes it all one. We don't need the two. We can take our clipping shape, hold shift, get the main image, object, clip, set clip. There it is. Now we can bring it all together, put snapping back on, see if it snaps into place. It does, and we're almost there. Let's grab it all. I'll bring it onto a neutral backdrop here. I think it looks good. I wanna do one extra step though. I'll take the clipping that we did, Control D. Let's move it out here. Object, clip, release clip, because I just want that shape, this. I changed it to black, full opacity, and I'm gonna cheat by doing not a filter, just literally putting a shadow behind it. Why don't we open up our fill and stroke and we can add some blur and cut the opacity. On hierarchy, we'll drop it beneath. And you can see it's actually where we don't want it on her actual face. Let's use the ever mysterious eraser right here. For mode, I'm gonna move not the first one, don't delete, not the second one, don't cut paths, the third one, clip from objects. 
because the last thing I had selected was that makeshift drop shadow that we did, if I drag the eraser, you see how it removes it? I almost never use eraser, but this is one of the cases where it's actually pretty useful. And that's it. I had a feeling this wouldn't be too complicated, even though it looks like there's a lot of moving parts. It's just a mask, a clip, and a drop shadow. If you have any questions on Inkscape or there's something you want to see done, let me know, and we'll see you next time.